This is Mike Carr for Banyan Hill. Today I want to look at whether or not stocks are ready for a melt up. The real question is which comes first, a melt up or a melt down? And I look at that question in this video. I start by defining what a melt up really is and then turn to the current fundamental, economic, and investor sentiment backdrop. But first, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll be notified when I post my next educational video. Now the truth is, stocks are more likely to melt down than they are to melt up, and that has important consequences for investors. First, let's look at what a melt-up is, and that's a period of time when stocks move rapidly. Now, a lot of analysts are going to shy away from quantifying precisely what that means. And what I want to do is put that term into context. I want to actually quantify it and give it a number with a rationale for why we should consider a particular period of time to be a melt-up. Now, it's important to remember that there are going to be times when stock prices should increase rapidly. That's going to be at the beginning of a bull market or at the end of a consolidation period. We could see a rapid melt up. Without that earnings growth though, the melt up is a bubble. And a bubble can happen as earnings slide assuming sentiment is very strong. So what we mean by sentiment is how investors feel about the economy. If investors believe the economy is strong and changing like they did in 1999, anything is possible in the stock market. That was the beginning of a new era in investors' minds. The internet was going to change everything. The internet did change everything, but it took 15 years longer than anybody expected at that moment. So let's quantify what this melt-up idea is. And we can do that with earnings. Now, earnings have grown an average of 9.1% per year since 1871 using data from Dr. Robert Schiller. In the long run, earnings growth approximates total return of the stock market, which averaged 10.5% over that time. Dividends accounting for the difference between earnings and total return of stocks. So we can then take that data and slice it into 12-month time frames. And we find that the absolute value is below 37% 90% of the time. So in other words, in the top 10% of price changes is 37% and above. Earnings growth was greater approximately 125 times. So this is a relatively rare event, and earnings growth was less than that amount, 56 times, an even rarer event. Now remember, earnings and total return are highly correlated. So we can define a melt up as periods of time when the 12 month total return is greater than 37%. This is going to give us just those rare times when stocks are accelerating rapidly. And here's an example. The most recent melt up came as stocks were beginning the bull market in 2009. It made perfect sense to see a melt up at that time because earnings were melting up. So we had a rational reason for it. And this is a weekly chart. You can use a 52 period rate of change just simply to see where we are as far as whether stocks are behaving normally or not. Now, melt-ups often occur before or after a recession. And again, that makes sense. These are the times when we would expect earnings to be doing something significant. And again, the chart highlights those periods. It's just important to understand there's usually an economic reason or a sentiment reason behind the bubbles. Is a melt up likely now? Well, not based on fundamentals. Earnings are expected to grow about 7.5% in 2019. So we don't have that justifying a melt up. The economy is slowing with economists at the San Francisco Federal Reserve 
basically forecasting a high probability of a recession before the end of 2019. We simply don't have the time from an economic perspective to have a melt up. And if we look at consumer sentiment, it's just not there right now. Consumer sentiment is driven by a number of factors, but it's neutral to bearish. People just don't feel good like they do when we have a melt up. And a melt up is, can't be driven by fear. When people are afraid, they're not rushing into the stock market defying the fundamentals. So we just don't have a reason to expect it. A melt up would push the S&P 500 to at least 3,700. That would be 22 times earnings. Unlikely to see that kind of a ratio. We're probably going to see a recession before we see a melt up. And in a typical recession, interestingly enough, stock prices fall on average more than 35%. We're right in line to see a decline. And the decline should be a meltdown. So rather than getting excited about the possibility of a melt up and going contrary to what the economic and fundamental data tells us, use rallies to become defensive. That's all I have for now. Thanks for joining me in our review of melt ups. I'd like your thoughts on the question, which comes next, a melt up or a meltdown? So please comment below. I'll have more videos on important ideas for investors, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in learning more about my strategies, just click on the link in the description below. That's it. Thank you for joining me.